Hello guys and gals, me Mudahari. Yesterday I committed the gravest sins in the eyes of the Nintendo fanboy Bible. I emulated a video game. Yes, I am going to hell, ladies and gentlemen. Now, yesterday I, I posted a video or I, 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 a photo where I showed... If I posted a video, I'd be taken down hardcore by a ninja. But I posted a photo of this. Now, you might be wondering, is that Skyward Sword? Yeah. And some of you might be going, Muda, <laughs> we all know you could emulate the Wii version of Skyward Sword, you dunce. It's not! So I have this friend that can hook me up with games earlier than release. It's not exactly the most kosher thing, I know. But I used that to basically obtain a copy. I backed it up using a hacked Nintendo Switch, and I copied it to my computer and ran it through an emulator known as Yuzu. And also Ryujinx. So you kind of have to mix them between the two. They, they tend to have uh, one thing works better for one emulator versus the other. Point is, this is Skyward Sword HD running underneath an emulator with 60 frames per second, okay, at 4K. Without a doubt, ladies and gentlemen, emulation is here to stay. If you're not here for emulation and you're a PC gamer, boy, you're missing out. While I own a gaming PC, I actually emulate more games than I actually play native games on a PC. I know that sounds weird, but emulation is the ultimate thing for gamers. It is the game preservationist paradise. There is no better thing in gaming than emulation. Because at the end of the day, you can't trust the gaming companies to preserve games. You can't trust the retro elitists to preserve games. All you can trust are the fucking code developers for emulators that work for next to nothing, preserving the video game hardware and software for us, okay? At least in the virtual space. Now, ladies and gentlemen, this is Skyward Sword running, and one of the immediate questions I kept getting was, Muda, but, but, Muda, you're doing something illegal, and Nintendo can take you to task for it. Now, I gotta tell you right now, that is the most fucking lukewarm, bullshit, smooth brain, nonsense, lame excuse I've ever heard. Ladies and gentlemen, I'm gonna take you through a legal court here, okay? Sony Computer Entertainment Incorporation versus Connectix Corp. Now, I've talked about this a long time before, but the idea over here is that uh, the Ninth Court, Ninth Circuit Court of Appeals ruled that the copying of a copyrighted bio software during the development of an emulator software does not constitute copyright infringement but is covered by fair use. The court also ruled that Sony's PlayStation trademark has not been tarnished by Connectus's corpse sales of its emulator software, the Virtual Game Station. Sony also tried suing this one company named Bleem and actually lost the court, and they actually got a protective order. It was issued to protect David from Goliath, okay? To protect the small guy from the big giant multinational. Now, because of these two lawsuits, emulation isn't illegal. Let me clarify what is illegal. If you share ROMs, ISO, files of games yeah that's pretty illegal all right that's pretty bad you can go you, you you could probably see a prison cell for that the other thing is sharing the bios file for those of you who don't know the playstation 2 emulator for instance requires an official bios firmware file dumped from a ps2 i know that almost none of you have ever actually done that but that's actually illegal you need to dump it officially from your own PlayStation 2, okay? That's the thing, and I've done it. I've done it via a hacked PS2, okay? So I can at least say that I'm clean from that sin. Ladies and gentlemen, those are the two things that make emulation illegal, okay? Now, emulators, as of their own, aren't illegal. You wanna know what the proof for that is? Let's go to a website known as fucking Dolphin, okay? This is the Dolphin emulator. Dolphin is an emulator for two recent Nintendo video game consoles, the GameCube and the Wii. So yeah, these are two of the massive Nintendo game consoles that are being emulated almost perfectly on an actual PC. You bet your asshole that Nintendo went out of their way to consider how can we take these people down and take their money? Nintendo can take down every ROM site in the world because they're spreading Nintendo games. Nintendo cannot take an emulator for their system down because there is there is legal precedent that protects this emulator from fucking Nintendo, okay? This is your proof that emulation isn't illegal. These people go above and beyond and they've actually connected the uh, Game Boy Advance emulator with the GameCube emulator so you could have that cross connectivity. See, they're even preserving bullshit like that, okay? Even the e-reader is preserving from what I know and how many of you use that shit now when I talk to retro gaming elitists that can't shut the fuck up about playing on original hardware with their fucking frame meisters and shit I always look at stuff like this right this is Super Mario 64 9.8 or whatever like the actual quality of it pretty close to sterling perfect okay like I'm pretty sure Iwata came on this one before he passed away and at this point this is priced at 1.8 
almost six million dollars. Okay, let's just one but whatever the fuck it is. If you, if money laundering came to your head, you're probably you, you, nobody nobody's gonna blame you for it. But this is a copy of the game that was sold for that much. You might be wondering, is this a misprint? No, I checked. It's not a misprint. Is it a fucking different ROM file? Is there a nude hack? Is there like Luigi's penis floating around above the castle? No, there is nothing like that. It is just Super Mario 64, one of the most widely known pieces of media selling for $1.5 million. Of course, you can probably assume nobody's going to actually play the game. So the entire point of buying the motherfucker is all but eliminated, okay? That's, that's just how it goes. So, ladies and gentlemen, emulators are for those that actually play video games versus coveting video games, okay? This is its own separate illness. Now, to understand, ladies and gentlemen, my history with emulation is pretty interesting. I actually started using emulation shortly after my PlayStation 2 busted. For those of you who don't know, PlayStation 2's had a, had a notorious issue with its disk drive, and while I understand it's a simple and easy fix, as a kid, when my PlayStation 2 stopped reading DVDs and stopped reading CDs eventually, my, gaming con my console gaming essentially came to a stop, alright? And while we moved around and I effectively lost a lot of my older consoles, I discovered emulators on PC. I discovered Project 64 to play some Nintendo 64 games, like Super Mario 64. There's a lot of 64s. Yeah, the game that just sold for 1.6 million as a kid, I ended up playing that game and had a good time. I've never played Ocarina of Time without an emulator, okay? I've only ever played it underneath an emulator on a Wii or the 3DS remake. I've never touched it on original hardware. Dude, I never owned a Nintendo 64 when you could own one. I used to play a a lot of PS1 games via an emulator. And emulation pretty much introduced me a lot to a big library of Super Nintendo games, Genesis games, and NES games. Now, as time evolved further and as it grew as an adult, one of the habits that I couldn't let go was emulating. Now I look at this shit like a championship. So here's Dolphin 5.0, the same emulator that basically I showed that isn't taken down by Nintendo. Now, if you open this up, you can actually play a lot of interesting games onto it. So I'll show you real quick. This is Resident Resident Evil 4 original on the GameCube. Oh shit man, that game looks rougher than I remember. Now ladies and gentlemen, this is the original GameCube version running on an actual emulator, right? And of course it's running with the exact same emulator setup that, or sorry, the exact same visual setup that the GameCube had. Now, when a game gets re-released, what I find really weird is that sometimes the worst of re-releases, and I'm looking at you Shin Megami Tensei 3, where uh, instead of actually re-releasing the game, they just basically look, it looked like they just upscaled the original PS2 version kept it at the same 30 frames and sold it for an upmarked price. Now it's great to own the game, but you can't expect that they can do a little bit better. So when you look at Resident Evil 4, a game that's been ported to PlayStation 4, PC, VR, Zebo, iOS, you have to wonder just how pretty can you make a game look under emulation? Now, I always find re-releases to be really stupid, and I guess this is going to be sort of my showcase. So, for instance, I guess the best way to show it is if you look closer at these tree branches, you can see that they look like Morse fucking code, okay? The idea of it is that this game is running at a lower resolution. So, because of emulation, you can always go to the graphics settings, and you can always jack that shit up to good old-fashioned 4K, or even 5K. I'm going to keep it at 4 I don't even have a 4K monitor, okay? Now at this point, god damn do those trees look defined. What happened is because of the emulator, we were able to change the in-game rendering resolution to something higher than it even is presented on an actual PS4 or an Xbox One version of this game. Now PlayStation 2 is another emulator that I talked about, PSX2, which is actually one of the main emulators that I've been playing on for the last several years. For instance, playing games like Grand Theft Auto Vice City has only ever been really possible for me lately under the PS2 emulator. For instance, the game already has a pretty stellar PC port if you count the fact that the frame rate being unlimited on the PC breaks it. That's, it's an old game, whatever. The fact that when you buy Vice City again, for instance, a lot of the classic 1980s music is actually removed. And that's because Rockstar is not willing to pay the licensing fees, understandably, for a game that isn't selling like GTA 5 slash GTA Online.
So because of that, you actually lose a lot of those original soundtracks that make the game that much more brilliant. And I consider that a pretty big deal. So instead of going out of my way to remod songs in, I just basically get my Vice City disc, back it up to my PC and run it underneath the PlayStation 2 emulator. For instance, this is Manhunt 2, a game that I absolutely adore. And it, it, this is another example to show you just what emulation can do. For instance, if you look at the bed over here, you can see that it has a lot of jack edges. And while that's not that big of a deal, something that I find really hilarious, again, going back to that re-release argument that the industry always likes to do, if you just bring up any emulator tool and go inside and just change the resolution settings higher, amongst other settings, you'll actually end up receiving the exact same cleanup effect. And a lot of these emulators have matured to the point that their graphical issues aren't really that big of a deal. Okay, so while that's PS2 emulation, I wanted to take it one step further and show you emulators of just two generations ago. So this is the PlayStation 3 emulator, RPCS3. You probably heard it from me a few times on my channel, but it's absolutely a banger emulator that you need to get into if you're emulating PS3 games. And you also have a computer that is from fucking NASA or something, okay? Because the system requirements, understandably, have evolved tremendously on it. For instance, everyone always talks about, I like Red Dead Redemption. If you play Red Dead 2 on the PC, you're actually playing the prequel to this game's story. So when you finish Red Dead 2, you might be like, man, I really love the story. Can I play the, uh, can I play what comes after? Well, you're gonna need a PS3 or an Xbox 360 or an Xbox One. Because in reality, this game has never been ported to PC. It's never actually been officially re-released ever. There's a funky story about them basically losing the source code, I think, to the original game and just never being able to re-release Red Dead Redemption 1. But with emulation, you can make it happen again. I'm not gonna show you that, because if you look closely, I just fired up GTA 5 PS3 on a PC through emulation. And I find that to be kind of weird too. So yes, ladies and gentlemen, we've got GTA 5 loading up. On, oh, wow, look at that. <laughs> Fucking, the PS3 never loaded up that goddamn fast. Now, of course, this is the actual PS3 version of GTA 5 running on my actual PC. Now, one thing to note here too, is if you look closely, I can actually go back into the PS3 emulator. I can change its custom configuration. So I can go to the GPU and I can say, hey, listen, instead of having this run at 720p, like on the original PlayStation 3, let's jack up its resolution scale to 4K. So I can hit apply, I can save that configuration, and I can reboot with the custom config right there. So now we're gonna run the game at 4K. So let's see how good it looks. So here it is, story, ah, look at that, we loaded it up. And ladies and gentlemen, look at the image right there. If you just compare it to what we saw, this looks a fuck ton cleaner. Oh, look at that lady's shadows, those are fucking broken. And now this is running at 30 frames per second and it has its own audio glitches. You may not hear any audio from my system right now because I'm actually doing something with it. I think the garage door is broken, but this has some own audio issues. However, that said, you can still play this game in its entirety, the original PS3 version on an actual, uh, on an actual emulator. Something that's always interesting about emulators like this is you might notice that frame rate issues pop up and despite you having pretty good hardware, sometimes a lot of that can happen is because emulators are literally trying to accurately emulate the hardware. So if you have a performance problem on the PlayStation 3 itself, it's probably going to be reflected on an actual emulator. But yeah, ladies and gentlemen, if you wanted to ever play GTA 5, the PS3 version, the first gen, the last last gen version on an actual PC, you you completely can, and it works for the most part. Oh shit! I just ran her the fuck over. God damn. Now this is a short gameplay of Metal Gear Solid 4, another game that is actually locked entirely to the PlayStation 3. No PS4 version, no PS5 version, Sony or Konami doesn't feel like porting it over to the PC. The only way to preserve this game is through RPCS3, where just now it's finally started to become playable all the way through. And with further enhancements, you're looking at this game running at like 4K with 60 frames per second. And honestly, this is one of those games where when you blow it up to that resolution, there's something about the art style or something about Kojima's art direction that actually makes this game a beauty to look at at those higher resolutions. Hopefully with a higher frame rate, we can actually relive this game again without any help from Sony or Konami or any of these retro elitists. 
Now, up until this point, we've been emulating video games that have come from systems that are long dead. And I think the moral argument is to like, hey, is emulation moral? I think when they don't sell the system anymore, like they ain't selling no more PS3s, they're certainly not officially selling a whole lot of these PS3 games right now on the market. A lot of these developers are not benefiting from any of the games that I've shown you running on a GameCube, a PS2, or even the PS3, okay? So in that argument, Morally, in my opinion, it's okay. The developer and the publisher doesn't make any money from these emulated titles or these hard or these hardware you know, systems itself. Okay, so at that point, what the fuck does it matter? Okay, are you willing to pay some sweaty neckbeard on eBay a 10 times markup when you can easily get these games that you probably already own backed up to your PC and playing them on hardware that will last longer than PlayStation 3s or PS2s or GameCubes? As more as game systems get more complex like the PS5, the risk for breakage and their fragility increases Mar like marginally more okay so at the end of the day an snes will probably be more tougher and long lasting agreed than something like a playstation 5 or an xbox series x it's kind of how things work the more moving parts you cram into a system like that the more risk there is for breakage but with emulators on this hand you can actually use standard off-the-shelf pc hardware and emulate these games to the ends of the earth now, where it gets morally ambiguous and kind of fucked is emulating games on the Switch, for instance. If you don't know, the Switch has a lot of emulators, okay? Yuzu, Ryujinx, I said a lot, but there's really only two that I know. And at the end of the day, these emulators are moving pretty fast, okay? So, for instance, games like Animal Crossing, Astral Chain run just fine on an actual emulator. Astral Chain, when blown up to 4K, looks absolutely brilliant compared to itself running at 900p on a Nintendo Switch. Games like Animal Crossing look beautiful blown up to 4K. A lot of Nintendo games have an art style that benefit greatly just from a simple resolution upgrade. And nothing is more true to that than Breath of the Wild. Breath of the Wild is a game that ran at 720p on the Wii U and 900p max on a Nintendo Switch. But with the power of CMU emulation, you can take the Wii U version of the game, blow it up to like 4K, maybe even ultra wide, maybe even super ultra wide, and you can even enhance the frame rate to go from 30 all the way to 60 frames per second, which looks absolutely brilliant. The emulator is so optimized that you can even use portable computers and run the game at 60 frames, 720p, on portable hardware. It's absolutely brilliant and glorious to watch. Ladies and gentlemen, emulation is an absolute wonder, and it's one of the best ways to preserve these video games. Because at the end of the day, you can't rely on Nintendo, whose backwards compatibility is slowly diminishing per generation, and you can't rely on Sony, who is so willing to get rid of PlayStation 3 stores like that. You have to rely on the gamers to back up the games that they own on discs, games like Red Dead Redemption on a disc, to a computer, and then also have an emulator that can run the code that's backed up from that disk on a computer. Because without that, without any of that, there is no guarantee these games are ever going to be preserved. This game will never get a re-release, okay? This game and Metal Gear Solid 4 are sitting and locked to a generation. These are absolutely brilliant video games. And there's an absolute shame when you know one day the hardware that's going to be playing this will eventually all but die out. But with emulation, a lot of gamers 20, 30 years down the road that want to ever look at retro gaming from their perspective can finally load up Red Dead Redemption on their systems and be able to play an absolute masterpiece regardless of finding a PlayStation 3 that's even going to be working by that time. That's the beauty in emulation, and that's one of the reasons I stand for it so fucking hard, okay? That's why I make videos like this, because I want to spread the Bible of emulation, and I absolutely get aggravated and pissed off when I have to hear misinformation about how emulation is illegal. If anything, emulation should be put up at the highest, like, zenith, okay? This is that final boss of the gaming world that keeps it alive and thriving long beyond its heyday. Ladies and gentlemen, this is me, Mudahar, and if you like what you saw, please like, comment, and subscribe. Dislike it if you dislike it. I am out.